Hello everyone. So let's start with the session now. So let me know am I audible is the screen clear so that we can start the session. So welcome to the session dear students. So is the screen clear and am I audible? Okay. So yes. Now today in this session I am going to explain the histology of respiratory tract in brief an important uh, histological slide which is asked with the students of the next aspirants the NEET PG 2022 and those of the first year MBBS students. Myself Dr. Mona Lisa have done my MD anatomy from Armed Force Medical College Pune. This is my code anat 10. So this is my code which can be used by you if you want to take the plus subscription of an academy. So my dear students, I would also like to give you information regarding my free session. So students, those who are interested can join me tomorrow for the session. So tomorrow I am taking brain stem part 1. So tomorrow my session is brain stem part 1. Okay, the timing is 7 p.m. Okay, on the unacademy platform. So I am taking brain stem part 1 special free session tomorrow Wednesday 7 p.m. So do join me for this session. Do join me for the 7 p.m. session. Unlock code is an ad 10. So students who are watching the session for the first time, they will download the Unacademy app from the Play Store, find their goal as Neat PG and thereafter they can use my code and add 10 to unlock the free sessions and they can participate in this session. So brain stem part 1. Do participate. It will be very useful for you. Now, I also want to brief you about the special class features. So, it's an interactive live session. So, where you can interact live with the uh, educators of Unacademy platform, live interaction. You can just clear your doubts. Polls are conducted during the session. So, the students are well aware about their doubts. Raise your hand and ask your doubts live in the session. Never miss a session. For example, if you start seeing my session, you start following Dr. Mona Lisa on the Unacademy platform. So you will start follow me then you will get the notification of all my upcoming session whether it is on the free or plus platform. After completing the session you will be provided you can download the lecture notes in the pdf form anytime anywhere read at your own place and have an interaction with the top educators of unacademy platform on the special free platform. Tomorrow 7 pm session my dear students on academy, unacademy platform brain stem Part first, I will discuss and do join me. Use the code and add 10 to unlock. Now, I would also like to tell you about the plus subscription detail and there is some exciting to be known for you because a few days, only four days are left for that exciting offer. So, I will also discuss about that. So, plus subscription. So, students, those who are, uh, those who want to take the plus subscription, they should know what is the importance of it and what are the uh, benefits which you will get assess both live and recorded version study on the device of your choice so study from india largest uh, um, india's most uh, important and the uh, learners of top educators of an academy platform of the medical fields assess more than 25000 mcqs based on the latest pattern and this is uh, this will be highly useful for you Compete in live test and quizzes coming soon is the coming of the printed notes. So my dear students printed notes will be provided to you with the plus subscription. So these are add on benefits which you are getting on the plus sub and these printed notes which will be provided to you with one year and more than one year of subscription of plus course is just till 11 September. So that means today is 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th. Four days are left for it. So avail this opportunity, go for plus subscription, use my code and add 10 to get 10% discount. Okay. Now iconic subscription where you get the benefits of two platform of uh, the platform of plus and also the platform of prep ladder. So you can study from the top educators of Unacademy platform along with the top educators of the prep ladder team. Dream notes will be provided, video lectures of the dream team of the prep ladder. QBank 3 can be assessed by you. Rapid revision, snapshots and treasure dream, dream notes will be provided. So prep ladder roads will be provided to you. So my dear students just grab this opportunity. Use my code and add 10 and get 10% discount. 
so highly updated highly effective q banks so you can practice more than 25000 highly effective and clinical mcqs based on all uh, latest platform of all 19 subject with a detailed explanation given by the top educators of unacademy platform of each and every single mcqs so yes use my code and add 10 so use my code and add 10 and get 10 percent discount also boost your medical preparation my dear aspirants boost your medical preparation by uh, taking 24 months or two year subscription and get additional four months of subscription free boost your preparation by taking 12 months of subscription and getting additional two months of subscription free and my dear students please don't waste this opportunity this is just an opportunity which should be extremely useful for you so use this code get 10 percent discount and take the subscription if you are planning to take the subscription of unacademy because just four days are left for the printed notes of unacademy so free unacademy printed notes free unacademy print once more i want to tell that it's very important that you will be provided with free unacademy printed notes if you take the subscription before so till 11 september so don't waste this time use my code and add 10 and get 10 percent discount so with one year or more of the subscription you will get printed notes absolutely free with the unacademy platform so just go for it grab this opportunity take the subscription use my code for 10 percent discount so what are the benefits of one month subscription one month subscription is still on on the unacademy platform so you can just go grab it what are the sessions which you will get with one month of subscription last three years need pg question banks covid test or grand test series need pg test analysis emergency room mcq batch and ultra fast high revision batch so what are the batches on the platform of fun academy which will helpful for you in cracking your exam focus fmg batch for 2021 examination and target next 2022 batch all these batches are taken up by the top educators of fun academy platform so just grab it use my code and add 10 and if you are going to take one year or more of subscription before 11 September, you will get printed notes also. So just grab it, use my code and get 10% discount. So also I want to share this pricing detail. So this pricing detail of where the comparison of Neat PG subscription and that of Iconic subscription has been done. So all here four years, three years and two years subscription is compared with that of neat pg iconic subscription so just go grab it use the code and add 10 for 10 percent discount so yes now we will start with today's session that is histology of respiratory tract so yes before starting the session i want to just tell you that you can use my code and add 10 and get the um, unacademy subscription so why i am telling you to take the subscription before uh, before 12th that is the last day is 11 september because this is the date when you will get the printed notes absolutely free on the unacademy platform after that it will be with only iconic subscription so it is just four days left so just grab this opportunity now let's start with the session so today's session i am going to cover up the histology of respiratory tract so my dear students uh, in this histology of respiratory tract i just want you to tell about uh, what are the changes which occurs in the parts of the bronchial tree so firstly i want to give a whole layout of it when we are coming from larynx to bronchioles okay when moving down from larynx to bronchiole so there are certain changes which is seen in the whole of the respiratory tract which is commonly applied to all so let's see what are the changes as we know we know that this is the conducting and the respiratory part so till the level of terminal bronchioles and respiratory bronchial is the transition stage between the conducting and respiratory um, tract so overall if we go down in the bronchial tree certain changes occurs so it is important for you to know what are the changes so structural changes occurring in the conducting portion of respiratory tract as we are moving from larynx to bronchial so let me tell you about that sri rangaraj hello dear welcome to the session so today's topic is very important as a whole i am discussing the histology of respiratory tract which is very important for you to know if you want to crack the next exam or you want to qualify your histology exam in the first year mbbs so let's target that okay so here okay so yes so first heading please write on structural changes 
the structural changes in the conducting portion of respiratory tract in the conducting portion of respiratory tract okay so the changes which will be taking place in the conducting portion of respiratory tract so what i want to tell that the certain changes are there which is seen gradually uh, as we are moving the conducting portion of respiratory tract first thing is that epithelium thickness will decrease so okay we know that whole of the respiratory tract has got lining epithelium of pseudo satisfied ciliated columnar epithelium so as we move down the lining epithelium will become simple cuboidal epithelium so these are the changes which is seen so i am just briefing you the changes which is seen from as we move down from the larynx to that of bronchioles changes okay so the changes are following the first changes is epithelium thickness decreases epithelium thickness will decrease what does this means that means the epithelium which is initially pseudo stratified the epithelium which is initially pseudo stratified columnar epithelium that is also having cilia so pseudo stratified columnar epithelium will change into as we move lower down it will change into as we move lower down it will change into simple cuboidal epithelium simple cuboidal epithelium got it simple cuboidal epithelium the other important point is goblet cells so goblet cells number will also decrease so goblet cells will also decrease the goblet cells also decrease what does this means that ultimately when you move towards the level of bronchioles the goblet cells will be if you are going towards the level of bronchioles and you reach the level of respiratory bronchioles or uh, just where the terminal bronchioles lies so it will be changing into clara cells so completely it disappears so completely goblet cells will completely disappear in bronchioles in the bronchioles it will completely disappear so this was the second change moving on to the third change elastic fiber so also glands in the submucosa gradually decreases so one more important point is glands in the submucosa layer gradually decreases so that will also gradually decreases completely so actually completely disappears it completely disappears in the it will completely disappear in the distal part of bronchioles so no glands in the bronchioles other than that cartilage will also decrease cartilage will decrease actually in the trachea there is c shaped cartilage but in the term in the bronchus principal bronchus there is plates of cartilage and at the level of bronchioles no cartilage no cartilage lies in the bronchioles so complete disappearance of cartilage in the bronchioles so all these things are decreasing what is increasing so smooth muscle fibers will increase as a whole smooth muscle fibers will increase smooth muscle fibers will increase elastic fibers quantity will increase so elastic fibers quantity will increase okay any doubt you can ask me rangaraj is it okay yeah any doubt those who are listening they can ask me their doubts if anything they are not understanding so my dear students i also want to tell you about the respiratory epithelial cells so before starting the individual slide so i would like to describe the individual i will show you a diagram histological diagram and explain you the individual slide so i would like to explain individual slides of epiglottis trachea 
principal bronchus and that of lung which uh, terminal respiratory bronchus so here i want to firstly describe about the respiratory epithelial cells which are the important cells so in the case of okay rangraj you are understanding very good the cells which is residing is gobelet cells there is ciliated columnar cells there is brush border there is granular cells and basal cells all these cells so yes in case of respiratory epithelium you can see all these cells are lying there so one by one i would like to describe gobelet cells gobelet cells okay gobelet cells if you will see can you appreciate the shape of gobelet cells is flask like the shape of gobelet cells is flask like and it is mucus secreting cell it is mucus secreting cell brush cells is columnar cells so if you will see the brush cell this is the brush cell and you can appreciate this is columnar cells these are columnar cells so brush cells is columnar cells on the free surface basal cells are small pyramidal type so yes see here if we talk about uh, this cell that is uh, pyramidal in shape this is the basal cells resting towards close to the deeper aspect it is in the pyramid shape also circular granular cells you can see so you can see here this i am highlighting with yellow color this is the granular cells okay so there is also granular cells granular cells are small rounded cells with cytoplasmic granules and also we have got ciliated columnar cells other than that we have got ciliated columnar cells so see here ciliated columnar cells has been seen so these are the cilia which you are seeing these are ciliated columnar cells ciliated cells is having cilia on its free surface and cilia is beating the dust particle not reaching towards the respiratory tract it is beating the dust particle uh, through the pharynx okay so these are the few respiratory epithelial cells five respiratory epithelial and cells and you have to know the function of each and how it looks this is very clear in this diagram so my dear students so in brief write about individual cells okay so respiratory epithelial cells write down the heading respiratory epithelial will contains following types of five types of cells following important five types of cells and these cells are so starting with the first these cells are ciliated cells ciliated cells these are ciliated cells gobelet cells brush cells basal cells and the granule cells granule cells these are the five kinds of the cells so let's describe each one by one in brief so ciliated cells what is the role of ciliated so columnar cells is having cilia on it is having cilia on the their free surface on their free surface there is cilia on their free surface the cilia resides and it beats towards the pharynx gobelet cells are flask shaped mucus secreting cells mucus secreting cells what about brush cells brush cells are columnar cells with microvilli so these are columnar cells with microvilli actually microvilli which also resides on the free surface so it will lie also in the free surface and the function is sensory function which function it is having sensory function okay now moving further basal cells so basal cells are small pyramidal cells 
they do not reach onto the surface and they give rise to other cells so they behave they are giving rise to other cells so they behave as stem cells granule cells are small rounded cells they are small round cells with cytoplasmic granules with content of cytoplasmic granules which belong to apud system amine precursor uptake decarboxylase okay so done with the cells yes yes rangraj goblet cells are also present absolutely right dear goblet cells are absolutely present in git and actually when we talk about large intestine there is large number of goblet cells jab aap large absolutely right sri rangraj jab aap large intestine ka slide dekhenge under the microscope the identification point about large intestine is presence of so many goblet cells so my dear students a very beautiful diagram is here which can help you to understand this is the goblet cells okay and you are absolutely right goblet cells are present in large intestine also and you can appreciate these are all cilias okay these projections which you are seeing is the cilias which is motile motility it is apical projection from the epithelium having motility lining epithelium is pseudo stratified columnar epithelium pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and you can see here nucleus is at different places and so it is giving the appearance of being multi layered but exactly it is single layered absolutely right sri rangraj respiratory epithelium as seen in higher uh, magnification and this is resting over which layer basement membrane this is resting over basement membrane now let's move on to the epiglottis next is epiglottis so we will discuss the epiglottis so what is epiglottis any idea those who are listening can anybody tell me what is exactly epiglottis epiglottis okay next i am discussing the histology of epiglottis so any idea okay so epiglottis uh, welcome sri rangraj anyone who are listening epiglottis is any idea what is epiglottis it is one of the larynx of the cartilage it is one of the larynx of the cartilage so when we are talking about epiglottis when we are talking about epiglottis it is actually double edged swedge uh, it is actually double edged swedge uh, double edged sword why it is called as double edged sword because it is having two epithelium so see here if i will highlight this diagram you can see it is having stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium it is having flaps up yes it's a flap like cartilage which is uh, which is attached to the posterior aspect of the tongue and it is stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium okay so it is stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium at the areas where it is lying close to that of the uh, uh, frictional aspect or oral aspect and when we are seeing the area close to the pharyngeal aspect pharynx respiratory aspect the lining epithelium is pseudo stratified columnar epithelium so you can see here here you can see it is multi layered on the area where it has to bear with the uh, area of oral aspect or with the friction and where it is lying close to the airways okay so here you can see it is which it is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar so these are the cilia so it is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium also in the case of larynx if i highlight it more can you see in the middle this is a plate of cartilage which is lying there this is elastic cartilage this is which variety of cartilage this is elastic cartilage actually this is the p for perichondrium so elastic cartilage is having perichondrium and so many elastic fibers and the elastic cartilage is having so many chondrocytes so all these are chondrocytes so whole of the slide is stuffed with the chondrocytes so many many chondrocytes are located many chondrocytes are lying okay and also it is having in the lamina propria it is having sero mucus gland so in the lamina propria sero mucus gland is lying so all these features are the features of epiglottis so let me write that feature so that you can revise it so write on epiglottis detail so respiratory epithelium we have done and all these cells which i have told you all the cells which i have explained just now these are involved in uh in cleaning up the dust particles so that it will not reach to the interior of respiratory tract 
also there is vascular plexus and all these are moistening the effect of the glands so all these so let's see the epiglottis detail so epiglottis is so if we talk uh, epiglottis is one of the laryngeal cartilage which is of unilateral okay type of cartilage lying here is the elastic cartilage it contains elastic cartilage and most of the larynx if we talk about most of the larynx most of the part of the larynx of the epiglottis it is having lining epithelium as pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium ciliated columnar epithelium pseudo satisfied columnar epithelium what about the lining epithelium lining epithelium done so this lining epithelium is also having with goblet cells it is also having goblet cells it is also having goblet cells now stratified squamous epithelium lies in the anterior upper aspect so when you will see the it is having two epithelium actually uh, when we talk about epiglottis so in case of epiglottis we have got two epitheliums two type of epithelium lies in the epiglottis one is the uh, pseudo satisfied ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells and other time where it comes contact with the food when the epiglottis is coming in contact with the food there it is having the epithelium which type stratified squamous epithelium stratified squamous epithelium stratified squamous epithelium when it come in contact with the food okay so that means uh, uh, so that means uh, anterior and upper part so anterior upper that means anterior upper part so anterior part of epiglottis which is lying on the posterior aspect of the tongue and the upper posterior aspect of the epiglottis will have stratified squamous epithelium okay and its lamina propria the lamina propria of epiglottis will have sero mucus gland will have sero mucus glands and also few lymphatic tissues so it will also have lymphatic tissues now next slide which i want to explain is the trachea so trachea is uh, it's a tube like structure and approximate length is 10 cm and 2 cm wide it's 2 cm wide what is the extent of the trachea so what is the extent extent of trachea is it extends from lower border of cricoid cartilage it is extending from the lower border of cricoid cartilage anyone remembers the level of cricoid cartilage c6 cervical vertebra so it is extending from c6 cervical vertebra till the level of tracheal bifurcation till the level of tracheal bifurcation till the level of tracheal bifurcation so 16 to 20 c shaped 16 to 20 c shaped hyaline cartilage yes up to t4 yes tracheal bifurcation that means t4 yes rangraj carina yes that is only called as carina tracheal bifurcation is called as carina absolutely right so 16 to 20 c shaped hyaline cartilage is there which is encircling the whole of the trachea why to keep the lumen patent so there is approximately 16 to 20 c shaped hyaline cartilages which is encircling the lumen uh, but it is posteriorly there is a gap it is not uh, wholly encircling posteriorly it is connected by a muscle that is trachealis muscle so it is to keep the lumen of trachea patent so write down so yes now coming to the structure of trachea
so coming to the first layer what is the first layer mucosa the first layer will be the mucosa the mucosa is having epithelium and lamina propria the mucosa is having epithelium and lamina propria which is what is the type of epithelium the type of epithelium is what is the type it is made of pseudo stratified pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium ciliated columnar epithelium pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium plus goblet cells plus the goblet cells mucosa will have epithelium plus lamina propria pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium plus the goblet cells what about lamina propria in the mucosa there is also lamina propria layer and in the lamina propria layer what is the what it contains it contains fibroelastic connective tissue mast cells loose connective tissues is also lying loose so there will be lymphocytes uh, elastic fibers fibroelastic connective tissues and mm, this is the important so it will be having fibroelastic connective tissues which is also having few elastic fibers lymphocytes and mast cells lymphocytes will be lying there and also it will have mast cells now is the submucosa layer so see here i will come to this so in this you can see this is the slide of uh, hyaline uh, this is the slide of trachea where you can clearly see hyaline cartilage has been shown so this plate of the cartilage which you are seeing is the hyaline cartilage this plate of bone uh, is this plate of cartilage you can see is the hyaline cartilage on the outer aspect this is the covering which covering is perichondrium and these are all chondrocytes in the group that is cell nest so this is what this is p perichondrium lining epithelium as you can see here this is the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium so what is the lining epithelium lining epithelium is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium okay outermost will be the adventitia layer submucosa if you will see the submucosa layer the submucosa layer is uh, is having sero mucus tracheal glands sero mucus tracheal glands are located so you can see here the glands has been shown here these are the glands so sero mucus serous mucus serous mucus glands are there mucosal fold and posteriorly the cartilage is connected by the smooth muscle so what i told you posteriorly there is discontinuity in the ring of the hyaline cartilage and this is connected by trachealis smooth muscle so write down this so again this is a uh, high power view so that you can understand so very nicely you can see the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium has been shown these are this white structure is all goblet cells lamina propria these are the nucleus which is towards the base at different position pseudo stratified columnar epithelium this is the serous sni this is the sero mucus tracheal gland this is the m for mucus sni this is the submucosa this was the submucosa layer and this is the part of the hyaline cartilage this is the high power view of the slide of trachea so write down the submucosa layer the submucosa layer of trachea is containing loose connective tissue and mixed glands what is mixed gland means both serous and mucus variety also the other important point of identification is c shaped hyaline cartilage will be there so the, it will have a c shaped hyaline cartilage rings and the posterior aspect of this ring is connected by so the posterior free ends of ring the posterior free ends of the ring is connected by or you can say it's bridged by smooth muscle 
is bridged by the smooth muscle and the name of that muscle is trachealis. The name of that muscle is trachealis. Now what is the outermost layer? The outermost layer will be, so write down, outer most layer will be, the outermost layer will be fibroelastic connective tissue, will be fibroelastic connective tissue. which will also contains neurovascular structure, which will also have neurovascular structures or structures lying there. So these are all the points of the slides of hyaline cartilage. So yes, we have done with the two cartilage, uh, two important slides in the respiratory tract epiglottis. Uh, we have finished with the epiglottis, okay. And we have, uh, we have finished with that of the Trachea. Next slide which I want to describe is intrapulmonary bronchus. So next important slide which I want to describe is intrapulmonary bronchus. So in case of intrapulmonary bronchus, uh, actually uh, it's, uh, it's important that uh, we know that trachea is dividing, it will divide to form the bronchus, secondary, tertiary bronchus, principal bronchus will divide into secondary bronchus then secondary bronchus into the tertiary and segmental. This is how the division occurs, okay. Principal bronchus into secondary, uh, then tertiary and then terminal bron uh, bronchus happens. So firstly, we will talk about the intrapulmonary bronchus. So here the first layer will be the mucosa. The first layer will be the mucosa and in the mucosa again it will have the epithelium plus LP for lamina propria. So my dear students, the epithelium is same as trachea, it will be pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Got it? Pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Lamina propria part will have elastic fibers. Mucosa will be thrown in folds, mucosa will be thrown in folds and what is the region of mucosa being thrown in folds? The region of mucosa being showed in, thrown in folds is the reason of contraction by the underlying smooth muscle, okay. So this is about the mucosa layer and the second layer is so it will also have smooth muscle layer and some mucosa layer. Actually the smooth muscle layer which is contracting and the mucosa is thrown in folds. So the smooth muscle layer is consist of spirally running, is consist of spirally running crisscross bundles of smooth muscles. So thus in section muscle layer is discontinuous and when you will see that muscle layer will be found discontinuous and also my dear students it will have the submucosa layer that is the important second layer then submucosa layer will have few seromucous gland. So the quantity or the number of seromucous gland is decreased it will have few seromucous gland. Then will, it will have the cartilage layer and again outermost layer will be adventitia. Outermost layer will be adventitia. Cartilage and outermost layer will be adventitia. Now in this cartilage layer is very important to know because this is a basic important point which is separating it from the, uh, separating this slide from that of trachea. Actually the cartilage uh, uh, layer will be in the form of isolated plates. It will be in the form of isolated plates of hyaline cartilage. It will be in the form of isolated plate of hyaline cartilage. Not, so actually in the case of trachea, waha pe C shaped ring tha. Now the cartilage is in the form of broken plates. Okay, in the form of broken plates, I would like to show you that. See here. This is the slide of intrapulmonary bronchus. Okay, this is the slide of intrapulmonary bronchus. So let me highlight it. So what you can see in this slide, so you can see the lumen, the lining epithelium. This is the this uh, these are the uh, so uh, still the lining epithelium. 
these are the cilias is same as respiratory epithelium pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium okay so also what you can see so other than that what you can see it is surrounded by cartilage plate can you see your cartilage hyaline cartilage plate has been shown so yes you can see but the hyaline cartilage plate which is surrounding the intrapulmonary bronchus is discontinuous it is discontinuous and also few seromucous bronchial glands are seen in the submucosa layer lamina these are smooth muscle fibers these are all submucosa lamina propria and these are smooth muscle fibers these are other perichondrium outer covering of the hyaline cartilage so important point is the cartilage ring has been broken in the form of plates now let's move on to the bronchioles so bronchioles are actually formed by repeated division of tertiary bronchi it is formed by the repeated division of tertiary bronchi so each bronchioles enter into pulmonary lobule where it divides to form 5 to 7 terminal bronchioles so what happens actually this tertiary bronchioles will divide divide and divide in the pulmonary lobule and ultimately will lead to the formation of terminal bronchioles the diameter of term, terminal so when we are talking about terminal bronchioles its diameter will be less than 1 mm now one more thing i just want to add on in this case one more thing which i want to add on in this case is that in case of terminal bronchioles so the characteristic feature of bronchioles is that lining epithelium is also decreased in height so lining epithelium is simple columnar it has now reduced it has become simple columnar or cuboidal epithelium few cilia so it is also ciliated epithelium but it is having no goblet cells so goblet cell no goblet cells no cartilage no cartilages no cartilage plates or ring or anything and no goblet cell that means actually at this level the goblet cell has been replaced by which cell so here comes the clara cells here comes the clara cells so goblet cells has been replaced by the clara cells and what is clara cells my dear students clara cells are actually made of glycoprotein this uh, what is the function of glycoprotein so glycoprotein of the clara cells is protecting the bronchial lining against the oxidative pollutants okay inflammation so clara cells is actually protecting it forms a protecting from the bronchial epithelium bronchial lining or from it forms a protecting from bronchial lining against oxidative pollutants and that of inflammation so yes so no cartilages and uh, also there will be no glands but many elastic fibers other than that what it contains is many elastic fibers so bronchioles is containing important point is that it contains many elastic fibers but it contains many elastic fibers now coming to the next so done so this is a diagram of bronchioles so let me just highlight it this is the diagram for the bronchioles and you can see here there is a the lumen simple columnar epithelium it is having simple columnar epithelium mucosal fold lamina propria smooth muscle no cartilage plate is there no cartilage plate is there now coming to respiratory bronchial so respiratory bronchial when we are talking about respiratory bronchial the respiratory bronchial is derived from terminal bronchioles it is derived from terminal bronchioles actually it is a transition stage between respiratory 
conducting and respiratory part of the bronchial tree so exactly we are talking about uh, the respiratory bronchial it is a transition stage which is lying between the conducting and respiratory part and it is similar the so the structure is very similar to terminal bronchial the structure is very similar to that of terminal bronchioles except the point which is important for you to know that its walls the walls uh, the walls of respiratory bronchial is interrupted by alveoli as an as an outpouching okay now see here this is the respiratory bronchioles and you can see here in this category of respiratory bronchioles if this uh, if this is the respiratory bronchioles what you can see here there is a break so it is it is a respiratory bronchial but here it is having a gap and these gaps are here and here and this is connected to that of alveolar opening alveolar duct so there, there is alveolar outpouching which is forming the gap rest all the features are similar okay now moving on to the next so yes so write down few important points of respiratory uh, okay so yes we have done so alveolar outpouching is made of so i just want to tell that this alveolar outpouching which you are seeing here is made of ciliated cuboidal epithelium plus clara cells so write down this point alveolar outpouching is made up of ciliated cuboidal epithelium and along with ciliated cuboidal epithelium it is also having clara cells and the function of clara cells has already been discussed the function of clara cells has already been discussed so then with this now what remains is the histological aspect of uh, alveolar duct and that of alveoli so we will discuss that alveolar duct and alveoli so alveolar duct arises from the respiratory bronchioles the first point is that alveolar duct arises from the respiratory bronchioles and what is the lining so its lining is squamous epithelial cells what is the lining epithelium so its lining epithelium is squamous epithelium a simple squamous epithelium so see here the epithelium height has been reduced as we are going more terminal uh, and we are descending down the what is that the epithelium height has been reduced it has become now simple squamous epithelium and what is actually if we talk about uh, so this is about alveolar duct and actually i want to add on more points it is sub, it is having few smooth muscle fibers surrounding so it is surrounded by few smooth muscle fibers also it is having fibrous connective tissue which is covering it fibrous connective tissue which is covering it and many alveoli will open into it many alveoli opens into this opens into it in the alveolar duct now next what remains is the alveoli so let's discuss next the alveoli so actually if, if we talk about lung alveoli parenchyma these are forming the parenchyma so they are forming the lung parenchyma lung parenchyma is formed by this lung parenchyma is formed by this alveoli and they are uh, they are the sites of invaginations which is present in terminal part of bronchial tree and this why alveoli is very important because exactly they are responsible for the exchange of gases between air and blood so what you can say exchange of gases between air and blood occurs in the alveoli okay and because of the presence of alveoli honeycomb appearance is seen in the case of slide of lung honeycomb appearance now what is very important for you to know in case of alveoli is the type of uh, cells so they are uh, it is having two types of cells type 1 pneumocyte and type 2 pneumocyte and it is important for you to know uh, the function of each so write down the alveoli is having 
is having type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes and what I uh, what I suggest I will explain each of it. It is having type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. Type 1 and type 2 pneumocytes. So, write down firstly type 1 pneumocytes. Type 1 pneumocytes. Type 1 pneumocytes is also called as what is the other name? It is also called as squamous epithelial cells. It is also called as squamous epithelial cells. Actually whole of the alveolar surface, if we are talking about the entire alveolar surface, 97% of the alveolar surface is having type 1 pneumocyte and extremely thin squamous cells are lying and it is having abundant pinocytic vesicle. What is present? It is having pinocytic vesicles and this pinocytic vesicles play a very important role in the absorption of surfactant. So what is the function they are causing? absorption of surfactants actually type 1 pneumocyte is also forming the part of blood air barrier it is also forming the part of blood air barrier this is the function another function now let's move on to type 2 pneumocytes now i would like to tell you the type 2 pneumocyte function and in the end, I will show you exactly the histological slide and its clinical and its uh, identifying features. So type 2 pneumocyte, other name is it is also called as great alveolar cell or septal cells. Other name is it is also called as septal cells. It is also called as great alveolar cells. And 3% of the alveolar surface only is covered by type 2 pneumocytes and it is roughly cuboidal. Type 1 was squamous but it is roughly cuboidal in shape. It is roughly cuboidal in shape. And exactly 1 or 2 lies between. Where is the location? It is 1 or 2 and it lies between. It, it is located in between type 1 pneumocytes and it is also, it also bears microvilli on its free surface microvilli on its free surface now if you will see the cytoplasm of the type 2 pneumocyte it is vacuolated it is having vacuolated cytoplasm Due to the presence of lam, so what it contains, it contains lamellated body and because of that presence, the vacuolated cytoplasm is seen in type 2 pneumocyte. Actually, it is containing complex lipoprotein. It is having lipoprotein, complex lipoprotein it contains and the function of these lipoprotein is that it spread over the alveolar surface and it leads to the formation. Its function is to form pulmonary surfactant. And my dear aspirants, what is the function of pulmonary surfactant? It is reducing the surface tension of alveoli and preventing the alveoli from collapsing during the process of expiration. So this is the function of type 2 pneumocyte, forming pulmonary surfactants that lower the surface tension and prevent the alveoli from collapsing during expiration. So in brief, we have ex I have explained all the features astrological features of identification of the slide included in the respiratory tract. Now after that let me show you this alveoli and alveoli wall which is showing you these are the alveoli which is having great alveolar cells as type 2 pneumocytes and type 1 is the uh, is the squamous variety this is the cuboidal variety slightly bigger these are all squamous variety alveolar type 1 and uh, the function of each we have done. Now before ending the session what I want, so I will show you each and every slide identify. So uh, all of you, if, if you are going for your examination and in quick time you want to revise all of the slide. So what I have included here, I have included here the 
माइक्रोस्कोपिक व्यू ऑफ ट्रेकिया सो दिस इज एक्जैक्टली हाउ इन अंडर द माइक्रोस्कोप इट विल लुक लाइनिंग इपिथीलियम विल बी सूडो स्टेटिस्फाइड सीलिएटेड कॉलमुलर इपिथीलियम देन इट विल ऑल्सो हैव दीज आर ऑल सीलियाज यू कैन सी दीज आर ऑल न्यूक्लियस एट डिफरेंट लोकेशन सो दिस इज सीलिएटेड कॉलमुलर इपिथीलियम विच यू आर सींग other than that what you will see lamina propria is lying and the deep part of lamina propria also contains elastic fibers and if you enlarge it can you i easily see these are the mucus gland and these are the serous gland so these are all serous mucus gland and also what you can see here you can see this is the part of hyaline cartilage so also you can appreciate the part of hyaline cartilage so all these features are showing you this is the slide of trachea so at the end see here the identifying features has been summarized pseudo satisfied columnar epithelium hyaline cartilage c shaped and tracheal glands lying that is mixed sero mucus type lying in that of the submucosa region intra pulmonary bronchus see here this is the enlarged view so very nicely you can appreciate the lumen so this is the lumen my dear ciliated columnar and you can see it is having isolated plate of hyaline cartilage surrounding few sero mucus gland s and m and adipocyte so few sero mucus gland so it is having few sero mucus gland it is having isolated plate of hyaline cartilage so these are all identifying features so wavy pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium is lying and isolated plate of hyaline cartilage and glands in the submucosa but number of glands has decreased now lung when you will see the slide of lung simple squamous epithelium the epithelium uh, size and height has been reduced terminal bronchus lung alveoli has been seen so honeycomb appearance if you will see the slide it appears like a honeycomb appearance presence of bronchioles will be there and lining epithelium is simple squamous epithelium so my dear students before ending the session i would like to inform you that my unlock code is anat10 which can be used by you for unlocking the free sessions and for taking the subscription of anacomy because till 11 september you are getting absolutely free the printed notes of anacomy platform that is on plus subscription so just go and grab it use my code for 10% discount i also want to give you the information that you can download the anacomy app use my code and can unlock the free sessions on anacomy platform and just 4 days remaining all of the students just see here this is my code and at 10 and 4 days are remaining to grab the opportunity of taking the anacomy plus subscription so just go for it because just 4 days and minimum take 1 year of subscription and more so that you will get uh, this um, opportunity of taking free printed notes of anacomy so i would like to inform all those who are listening so just 4 days are remaining and after 4 days it will not uh, be given uh, with the anacomy subscription so this is an information which i want to share so those who are planning to take the subscription just go for it take the subscription of 1 year or more and get free printed notes of anacomy use my code for 10% discount so use my code and add 10 and get 10% discount also boost your preparation by taking 2 years of subscription and getting 4 month of subscription free or by taking 12 month of subscription and getting 2 month of subscription free use my code and add 10 so just go and grab this opportunity and use my code and add 10 for 10% discount so all the details of the pricing has been given at the top and just go for it all the best keep studying thank you so much okay so any doubt let me know or i will end the session so we will again meet tomorrow 7 pm is the brain stem class so i just want to tell that tomorrow my special free class is on the brain stem so brain stem external features tomorrow 7 pm is the timing so those listening is rangraj there so you can join me 7 pm session Uh, and you can use it as a unlock code and be the part of 7 pm session absolutely free on the platform of one academy so just grab it go for it all the best keep studying thank you so much we will again meet up with the new coming sessions on the friday i will come up with new sessions on the youtube and also tomorrow will be the session 7 pm brainstorm sri rangraj okay and if planning to take the subscription go for it because now you are getting free uh notes provided free printed notes of anacomy all the best keep studying thank you so much thank you thank you students all the best thank you everyone